Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth part of my Blender tutorial series, an introduction to geometry nodes. In this series, we are recreating the famous Blender Guru Donut entirely with geometry nodes. In the previous part, we created a basic donut with icing. Today, we add basic sprinkles on top of the icing. The main theme of this tutorial will be instancing. First of all, what are instances? They are basically copies of the same geometry, duplicated often thousands of times and used for all sorts of effects, like grass, rocks or other elements. You can actually create your first instance by hand extremely easily. You just need to select an object, for example the default cube, and press Alt-D. As you can see, similar to Shift-D, now we have two cubes. But when we enter the edit mode, if we change something in the first one, the second cube change exactly the same. All instances share the same mesh data, which is why we can use even millions of them in a single scene without crashes. It is a very efficient way and saves a lot of memory during rendering. Now that we know what instances are, let's use them to create our sprinkles. Let's drop into our blend file and continue to work on the donut. By the way, if you are new here, you can check out my first part of the series, Introduction to Geometry Nodes. Our first task now will be to separate the area where we want to have sprinkles. First of all, we want them only on the icing, not on the dough. So let's drag a new wire and create a readout node for now. We have our icing, but we don't want sprinkles on the whole thing, especially not at the bottom, because they won't even be visible. The best approach now will be to separate the geometry where we want our sprinkles. To do that, we'll use the separate geometry node. Let's add it after the readout node. Now, we need to create the selection field to separate the top part of our geometry. We will use the normal direction for that. Why? The normal direction of the geometry is useful in many cases. We already use it for displacement, but one of the most common use cases is selection based on orientation. This means we can select the part of the geometry that faces a specific direction like the top part, bottom part, or the side part. To make that selection, we will need two more nodes. The dot product node and the greater than node. Let's plug them in like this. This product is a math operation on two vectors that tell us how they are positioned relative to each other. The value of the dot product ranges from minus one to one. If the value is negative, it means that the angle between two vectors is greater than 90 degrees. If the value is exactly zero, it means that the angle is precisely 90 degrees. If the value is greater than zero, it means that the angle between the vectors is smaller than 90 degrees. It also indicates that the vectors are exact opposites if the value is minus one and they are the same if the value is one. That product is very useful comparison. Let's specify our second vector as 0, 0, 1. This will be a simple vector that just looks up in the positive z axis. So, we want to select normals that are facing upwards with a little bit of margin. To control that, we can adjust the value in the greater than node. A value of 0.5 works well for our selection. Now that we've selected the geometry where we want to place our sprinkles, it's time to choose the location for our instances. For that, we will use points. The most common approach for instancing with geometry nodes is distributing points on faces or inside volumes, and then placing instances on top of them. This approach is really nice because it enables us to control the density, spacing and patterns of distributing instances very quickly as we are not working with real geometries, just points. To create points, we need to add the distribute points on faces node, which does exactly what its name suggests. It distributes points 
across the faces of the geometry. This node has a few important settings. Let's go over all of them. First, we have a drop-down menu with two options. The random option distributes points randomly on faces. To better see the difference between random and poison disk, let's increase the density to have more points. As you can see, these points are really big, so it would be more convenient to make them smaller for preview. To do that, we can add a set point radius mode. It allows us to change the size of points. Let's set it maybe to 5 mm. Great. Now we can see all the points on our icing. The density is the most important setting here. It controls how many points we have. It's important to remember that this works with scale, so the same density will create many more points on bigger objects than on smaller ones. Because we are working with real scaled object and the donut is pretty small, we need to have pretty high numbers in the density. The random mode distributes points randomly. The poison disk mode does this too, but with few additional settings. The main one being distance minimum. This allows us to specify the minimum distance between points, which can be really useful to avoid intersecting geometry. We'll stick with the poison disk option because I want to specify the distance minimum to maybe 3 mm. The selection input works just like before. We can specify where we want to distribute points. The density factor option allows us to control the overall amount of points. You can think of it like this. First, we created 1000 points with a specific minimum distance. And now, we want to have fewer points. The density factor allows you to do that. The last option, seed, allows you to switch between different variations. We can plug this seed into our global seed value from the group input node. Now we can randomize the sprinkles point from the modifier tab. So, now we have points. Let's put some sprinkles on them. The node that allows us to place instances on top of points is named Instance on Points. Let's add it. This node has several options too. First of all, the points input is where we specify the points on which we want to place our instances. The selection input allows you to choose only specific points, just like with any other selection socket. The pick instance option is used when you have many different instances, like various plants or other meshes. If you use, for example, a whole collection of objects as an instance, this checkbox will randomly switch between different objects in the collection instead of placing all of them on every point. The instance index allow us to specify specific instances. For example, choosing only one from the collection. We will not be using the pick instance option in this course because I want to make each sprinkle completely unique. The two remaining inputs are pretty self-explanatory. The rotation input is for rotating instances and the scale input is for scaling instances. A little bit of extra theory about instances. First, we cannot change the geometry of individual instances. They must all be the same. However, there are a few things that allow us to create a more wired look. First, as I mentioned before, we can use multiple objects in a single instancing system. We can also randomize the rotation and scale of each instance, creating much more interesting results. Now it's time to create some sort of instance. In a future part, I would like to make each sprinkle different, so we will not use a simple cylinder for the sprinkle mesh. Instead, we will use a curve line. Let's add a curve line node. This node allows you to create a simple curve by specifying the position of the start and end points. It also has a second mode that allows specifying the direction and length of the curve. Why are we using a curve? 
because later it will allow us for much more customization. Additionally, we can convert it to a cylinder with a simple curve to mesh and circle profile nodes. So, it will look like a cylinder in no time. Let's specify the length. I want to have a vertical line, so we need to adjust the start and end points in the z-axis. Why start and end? Because I want to have the center of the curve in the middle. So when we place the curve on top of the icing, they should start the icing with the midpoint, not the end point. Let's add a value node and set it to 0 0.012. This will be our length. I am using a value node because I want to have a single node to control both the start and end points of the curve. Let's add two combined XYZ nodes. Now we want to set the start point at minus half the length and the end point at half the length in the z-axis. To do that, let's divide our length by 2 with a math divide node. Now let's multiply it by minus 1 with a math multiply node. We have two values that we can plug into a combined XYZ nodes. Perfect. As you can see, now our curve line is exactly in the middle. Perfect. So, let's join our icing and sprinkles together to better preview what we are doing. As you can see, it would be really nice to align our sprinkles with the icing a little bit more because currently they are aligned in a single direction. Thanks to the distribute points and faces node, we can do this really easily with the rotation output. Let's plug it into the instance and points, rotation, input, and that's it. Our instances are clearly aligned, but not kinda in the way we want. Currently, the sprinkles are standing. We want to align them horizontally, not vertically. To do that, we just need to rotate them by 90 degrees. But how we can do that if the rotation input is already used? We could try to make a more complex field here, but a much easier solution is to use a simple rotate instances node. With this node, we'll be able to rotate our instances, so Let's add it. If you play with the rotation values, you will notice that rotating in the x-axis by 90 degrees, that's exactly what we wanted. This is because we basically rotate our instance to make them horizontal. We could do exact same thing here, before instancing, with a transform node. As you can see, the result is the same. Great. Now it's time to add a little bit of randomization. Let's add another rotate instance node and a new scale instances node. Let's talk about the inputs of these two nodes a little bit more. The selection input is clear, as well as instances. Notice that it clearly says instances, not geometry. It is designed specifically for instances. The rotation and scale inputs are pretty self-explanatory. The pivot point allows us to specify a specific point which will be the center for scaling or rotation, but currently it is ignored because we have the local space checkbox select. This checkbox allows us to scale or rotate each instance separately along its own origin point, which is what we want in most cases. However, there is a possibility to use a more complex field to specify exact points along which we want to scale or rotate. So, to randomize our sprinkles, we will use two random value nodes. One set to vector and one to float. These nodes will give us random values 
in specific types. As you can see, we can switch between four different types, float, vector, integer, and boolean. Let's play with these values to create a nice randomization. We can also plug these seats into the group input seat. Great. Now we have perfectly random sprinkles. The one thing that bothers me at this point is that we still have just curve lines. It would be nice to transform them into cylinders. As I said before, we cannot edit the geometry of instances, but what we can do is to convert our instances to normal geometry and then edit them. To convert instances, we can use the Realize Instances node. If you hover over the socket, you can see here we have instances, but here we have curves. You can notice that also inside the spreadsheet editor. There is a selection input to specify which instances we want to realize, as well as a checkbox to realize all. This just realize all instances. The depth option is useful when we don't want to realize all instances in cases where we have nested instances. Nested instances occur when we have instances on one object and then use that object with instances as an instance for another system. So, now that we have created standard curves, let's use curve to mesh and curve circle as a profile to create cylinders. Let's change the radius, check fill caps, and that's it. If we turn off our realize instances node with the M key, you can notice that our curve to mesh node still works. This is because Blender is smart enough to continue to work with original instance geometry. But keep in mind that we still have the same geometry on all instances. We cannot make them different without realization. For example, if you try to use our displacement setup on them, as you can see, nothing happens. This is because instances don't have normal attribute. Even if we try to set the position with only noise, as you can see, we are moving the whole instances without deforming them. If we unmute the Realize Instances node, we can clearly see the deformed mesh. I will leave the Realize Instances node for now. It will be useful in the future and I will show you why. So, we created our phased basing particle system with instances inside geometry nodes. Great job! Now, let's join it with the dough and add another material. That will be it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new as well. If you want to support my channel, you can check out my Blender add-ons and asset packs, link in the description. You can also download the files and the final file of the donut from this course, link also in the description. Stay tuned for the next part. Thanks again for watching, see you again soon, and bye!